Those are the voices of ghosts. The ghosts of the Celts and the Belgae, the tribes of Britain before the Romans came. They'd seen those ships before, and the armour, the spears, the standards. But this time, the Romans had come to stay. That is where you hear the ghost voices. Down there, beneath the earth of the hill forts. Many tribes with many kings and queens. Sometimes fighting, sometimes at peace, long before the Romans came and conquered. They were an organized people, well fed and clothed, their farms well tended. But the tribes did fight among themselves, sometimes retreating to their defended hill fort villages. But the Roman invasion was different. Many tribes gave in at once, but some gathered behind their ramparts to shower the Romans with slingshot. But they reckoned without the longer range of the Roman ballista, the scorpion, and the skill of the chief centurion of the second legion. Anicius Maximus, centurion of the first cohort, second legion Augusta. We took 24 hill forts like Maiden Castle. Easy. Force the defenders off the ramparts with showers of bolts from the scorpions. Fire some huts. Use the smoke cover to storm a few cohorts with their shields locked in a tortoise right up to the gates. And in you go. We took a bit of a pasting on the way up, but we gave it right back to them. I was rewarded later by the Emperor Claudius. <laughs> It says so on my tombstone. Murderers! You and your scorpions! You slaughtered us all, women and children too! Thirty-four of our skeletons they found. One my own man with a scorpion bolt deep in his spine. And my hands tied behind my back before you beat my skull in. Cruel soldiers. Cruel. Yes, cruel if you like, but tough and efficient. That's me on the right, Marcus Favonius Facilis, Centurion 20th Legion Valeria Victrix. The Centurion looked after 80 men, and I used that stick. My tombstone was put up by my freedmen, ex-slaves that is. We all had slaves, but when they were 30 you could free them, like I did. Ordinary legionaries had slaves too. Not that legionaries were ordinary. No, they were skilled craftsmen. They could build as well as destroy. Forts, roads, aqueducts. We even taught your lot how to make bricks. Bricks? Is that all you taught us? And Pax. Pax? Pax Romana. The Roman peace. No fighting. Peace and quiet. A chance for everyone to grow a bit more, make a bit more, earn a bit more, get rich even, like lots of us were back home in Rome. The greatest city in the world, bar none. You know what your chieftain Caraticus said when they brought him here in chains? When you had all this, why did you cover our poor huts in Britain? Well, why did you? One answer was that our leaders in Rome, the ones with the power and the money, wanted to get richer. They lent money to the British at stiff interest to build new towns, and then taxed them. And they made money out of trade. Exports of fine pottery, wine and spices for the courts of the British kings. In return, they got British gold, silver, lead, tin, and British slaves from a market in London. But why use London? Easy from the sea and a good point for crossing the Thames. Grew quickly, London. We Romans were efficient. We were all so greedy. We took whatever we wanted in the name of the Emperor, until one of the southeastern tribes, the Iceni it was, rose in rebellion. Led by a woman, too. Their Queen Boudica. Boudica! 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 The lusts of the Romans have swollen so far 
they respect not even age or maidenhood. But the gods of righteous revenge are at hand. They were too. Colchester, St Albans and London itself were all burned. Fires, gallows, crucifixions, slaughter! Seventy thousand dead, our Roman histories say. And she managed to ambush the Ninth Legion. But the British lost in the end in a terrible battle with the Twentieth Legion, and my old lot, the Fourteenth. But I'd been dead seventeen years by then. Twenty years on, and London would be rebuilt with a splendid new palace for the Roman governor. Agricola was his name, a famous one. <laughs> <laughs> a famous ghost now, but famous because of my son-in-law, Tacitus. A historian, you see, wrote a lot about my role in Britain. Agricola's objective was to accustom the Britons to a life of peace and quiet by the provision of amenities. He educated the sons of chiefs in the liberal arts. The result was that instead of loathing the Latin language, they became eager to speak it effectively. Yes, well, personally, I'd prefer mention of my campaigns uh, in the north and in Scotland and all the army camps I built and the roads. Find a Roman fort and in 99 cases out of 100, you find a Roman road. In the end, we had 6,000 miles of road in Britain, some much better constructed than others. The army trained the road surveyors. They used a special instrument which helped them plot straight lines. Little to the left. Town streets, Bit too. More. Yeah, that's it. You see there, those ghost marks in the grass? That's the town of Kaleva. No one ever built on top of it, so you see it complete, as it were. But not very Roman, is it? It's not square. Not even a rectangle. That was for army camps. But the streets are laid out in rectangles. But looking at that ghost of a town, can you imagine how our towns actually looked? Let me help you. And who are you? Albanus. Alban to you. This is my town. Very lamium as it was. I was beheaded here because I was a Christian and a Roman soldier. They made me a saint later. Always busy, this town. About 15,000 people. Of course, London was even bigger. 30,000 or more being the centre of government where coins were minted and where all the traders came from the other parts of the empire. And where there's trade, there are shops. See down there, butchers, bakers, candlestick makers. They can't write, but they can count. And they speak Latin as well as British. Ask him, that butcher there. 47, 48, 49, there we are. Excuse me, do you speak Latin? Who, me? Viticus? Taken prisoner at the wall? Of course I do. You mean Hadrian's Wall? Aye. Made slave to a legionary, then a freedman. He set me up in business as his manager with his army pension. Oh, hello. How are you? What can I do for you? A venison, please, Viticus. Enough for eight. Master's feasting the tax collectors tonight. Oh, is he then? Well, how about this nice haunch? I'll wait for you. Uh, what are you starting with? Oysters? Salad tonight with the oysters. Lettuce, beans, onions and asparagus. And some of these newfangled radishes from Italy. And who may you be, young woman? Regina. Sold into slavery by my parents. But I'm living in hopes. One of the guests tonight's got his eye on me. He could buy me if I'm lucky. Barates, he's called. Merchant, comes from Syria. Oh, I must get on. I'll just leave this lot in the kitchen. See that great jar in the corner? Olive oil. Use a lot of it, we do, for cooking. Dressing salads and such. Comes from Spain, mostly. We cook on charcoal. But that's more men's work. I spend most of my time with my mistress. On a big night like this, we all have to help her bath and make up and dress. Not forgetting a hairdo and a jewellery. Most of hers is gold. Of course, she has pearls too. Oysters being so common. On the menu tonight, like I said. 
But I tell you, I'll be serving, not me. They like men to serve them. <laughs> Wine here, Hadalia! Hey, coming, sir. Look at the state of him. That's the trouble with these new rich Britons. Can't take it. The wine, I mean, should stick to British beer. Thank the gods the floor's mosaic. At least it washes. When the Saxons came later, they had no time for the Romans mosaic. Floor pictures, wall pictures, patterns in coloured stone and glass, nothing to interest them. Nor many others later. People have been wrecking and robbing them for 1,500 years. Only a few examples left now. Some people, it seems, were very rich, rich enough to afford expensive mosaics and tables with legs carved out of rare Dorset shale. And they could have treasure on their tables, like this silver dish, precious metal instead of the ordinary clay pottery most folk used. Masses of that must have been made. Look at the thousands of bits that have been dug up. Where did it all come from? Industry, of course. Potteries, mines, quarries. We had a hand in them all, especially the mines. You? Uh, the government. The army needed a lot of metal, you see. Lead, iron, tin, copper to make bronze. We controlled all the mining. We gave leases to civilians, but we still took half their output for the emperor. That's the emperor's name on that lead pig, along with the name of the civilian agent. And those manacles? Uh, we sometimes had to keep slaves underground in chain gangs. Here's another ghost for you. A ghost farm. We took a lot of land after the conquest, gave it to veterans, trustworthy men, or leased it. Everyone paid a corn tax in kind for the army to feed itself on. Farmers on flat land tended to use our heavyweight Roman plough, got them more yield. This is a lighthouse at Dover. I not only had to run the country and the army, I had to keep an eye on defence. The seas were always swarming with pirates. We had to run a navy in the end, build shore forts too. Governors needed eyes in the backs of their heads. Not many ghosts in the sea, I suppose. But what else on land? What about the lovely villas the landowners lived in? Not all as big and grand as this one by a long chalk, but then many owners lived partly in town as well and enjoyed the good things of life. But the slaves, see them in the outhouses around the villa? Do they have ghost voices? Ninety-seven skeletons in the villa yard. Cold babies of girl slaves left out in the cold to die. To keep down the slave population. Everyone did it all over the Roman world. But my masters weren't cold. They knew how to keep a villa warm. Underfloor central heating. All you needed was tunnels under the floor, flues up the wall, and a slave to keep the fire going. Wood, charcoal, even coal. Adalia, more heat, man, more heat! <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, please! A slave is not just a stoker, you know. Given our freedom, some of us are teachers. Many of us, in fact. These boys are lazy. They do not wish to learn to read and write. They want only to play knuckle bones, foolish boys. They must read and they must write the Latin language. Sir, my father... Silent boy! Oh. Your father pays me to teach you the Latin language and I will. Kill! 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 Not only the Roman language, Roman customs and Roman pleasures are copied. Public baths and public killing. Lucius, my name, gladiator, professional, you know, died in bed. They didn't let many of us fight to the death. Too wasteful, too expensive. The ones who did get killed were mostly criminals and such, forced to fight each other. Not very nice. 
Took a pension myself and married. Very kunda. Nice girl. Actress. That's me. This is where I worked till I met Lucius. <laughs> Both entertainers in our own way. Well, the shows weren't serious, except when the theatre was used for worship. What happened when the Emperor became a Christian? Well, that was the beginning of the end. Before the Romans finally left, this theatre was a rubbish dump. The Romans were generally tolerant about religion, except for the Druids, whom they saw as a political threat, and the Christians, who, earlier on, they persecuted for claiming theirs was the only religion. The face in this mosaic is believed to be of Christ, the only one of its kind in Britain. Several religions had come to Rome from the east. Christianity was one, and the worship of Mithras another. Mithras was a god of light and truth, which made him a favorite among merchants and among soldiers, because you had to go through tough physical tests to belong. We had a temple to Mithras up here on Hadrian's Wall. Just the sort of god you need in a place like this. It was a hard posting at the best of times, but not so bad if you were near a town like Corbridge, the supply depot. You could use the baths here, and we used to get new boots and other kit from an old Syrian merchant called Beratus. Funny name, eh? Greek, not Latin. I traded in all sorts of gear. Mostly to do with the army. I married a slave girl down south. Regina, lovely girl. Of course, I made her free as soon as she was 30. And no sooner I did, than she died. I lived a lot longer. 68. It's on my tombstone. The earth around the wall is full of ghostly reminders. Tombstones of ghostly soldiers. Their boots. One whole suit of armour. Even a soldier's letter from home. Dear Hermio, I've sent you some socks. Also two pairs of underpants. Greet my friends, Eloise, Tetricus and all your messmates. I pray you and they may enjoy long life and the best of fortune. That soldier and his messmates are dust but we know them from a thousand clues the archaeologists have found for us. The same with the towns the Romans built, their leisure resorts, even the tumbled stones of Bath, which puzzled the Anglo-Saxon poets 500 years after the Romans were all shades. Bright were the buildings, these halls where warm springs ran, but fate swept them all away. The Earth's embrace has claimed the warriors and the craftsmen. They are perished, gone. Over the last years of the Roman Empire, the governors and the legions left Britain to fight rebellion in Gaul and Spain. The attacks of the Angles and Saxons and Jutes from Northern Europe grew stronger, and gradually they took over the tribal centers of the Roman British often destroying the crumbling remains of the Roman presence. Cities, villas, roads. But so long as the ghost voices are there in the earth, you cannot help but hear them. Oh yes, the Romans are here.